Hallelujah. Can you sense, before you're seated, can you sense the spirit of breakthrough? Can you sense it different tonight than it was last night, this morning, or this afternoon? I just want to declare to you, we have broken through. Amen? Yeah. Hallelujah. Now, let me say this, is that breakthrough is not the end of a matter. Breakthrough is the beginning. D-Day was a day of breakthrough, but when they broke through on the beaches of Normandy, they didn't stick their rifles in the sand and stop and have a party. The reason they had broken through was to begin to advance and to begin to take the land and liberate the people. Amen? And I just decree right now that breakthrough has begun. Liberation has begun. It is a new day, declares the Spirit of the Lord. Amen? You can be seated. Hallelujah. I believe that we are in a new day. Um, I'm going to pick up a little bit on... Uh, just talking for just a moment about Donald Trump. Um, I, I actually had a vision at the beginning of this year. And as I was praying and seeking the Lord, I had this, this vision where I was standing shoulder to shoulder with a line of, of believers. And Jesus approached me and I put out my hand and Jesus put a white stone in my hand. And when he put the white stone in my hand, he closed my hand up kind of looked me right in the eye and just kind of nodded like, we got this. Okay, then, the, then he went to the next one and the next one. And then the scene changed, and he was standing in front of President Trump. And President Trump put out his hand, and he put a white stone in President Trump's hand and closed his hand over it, and he let President Trump know, we got this. And he went on down and he gave a stone to each of his family members and to each of his advisors. Now, this was in the first week of January. I did not know COVID was coming halfway through March, um, but, I, but I knew that God had given us something that was going to carry us through this year through some challenges. So I, as, as I began to research the white stone, of course, we know in Revelation chapter 2, verse 17, it says, to him who overcomes... To him who overcomes, and this was written to the church at Pergamus, which, uh, Pergamum, which was one of the most idolatrous cities, and they actually had a temple and a place called the Seat of Satan. I mean, this is the worst of the worst, right? But he says, to him who overcomes, I will give you to eat of hidden manna, and I will give you a white stone with a name written on it that only he knows. And so I, sir, I researched this, and I found something very interesting. And I want you to understand, Jesus is putting a white stone in each of our hands, the hands of the ecclesia. But I, I want us to think about the fact that he also put a white stone in the hand of our president. Because when you research what a, a white stone meant in the Greek culture, it's very interesting. Because number one, if you were going to go to trial and be tried by jury, each of the jury members were given two stones. A black stone to vote guilty and a white stone to vote for innocence. I think I had this vision when the president had already been impeached. But how many know that there was a white stone for him and that he was acquitted? Amen. The second way that they used a white stone is during an election season. That when you went to a polling station throughout the city, you were given a black stone to vote no and a white stone to vote yes. And I just believe the Lord has put a white stone in our president's hand. Amen? And God has put a white stone in each of our hands. What are we going to do with our white stone? Come on. I believe that we need to be praying prayers of victory. The third, the third way that they used it in the Greek culture was when an athlete won at, a, at some major athletic event, you know, that's where the Olympics comes from, they were not given a medal to hang around their neck or a trophy to sit on the shelf, okay? Instead, they were given a white stone with the champion's name written on the white stone so that they could carry the white stone wherever they went because that white stone with their name on it then became, as it were, a ticket or a pass that now this individual is allowed entrance into the, uh, into the elite events of the Greek culture. 
Whereas before you were just a citizen, now you are a super citizen. Okay, before you were never allowed to go to certain banquets or events or, uh, or, or entertainment or political events, but suddenly this white stone gave you entrance. And I believe that the Lord is standing with a white stone for Donald Trump saying, I am, I am he that opens for you. I am he that opens for you and no man can shut. Come on. I believe that Isaiah 22, 22 is what God is giving to Donald J. Trump during this season of time. But this last week as I prayed about that, I was reminded of some stones, albeit maybe not white stones, but in the Old Testament, we had, and what we're doing here is that we, they had stones of remembrance, which was about covenant. They had, um, they had the boundary stones. The ancient boundary stones. Let me, let me actually give you that scripture. Proverbs twenty two twenty eight 28 says, Do not move an ancient boundary stone which your fathers have set. This is what we're talking about. The ancient boundary stones. Because moving a boundary stone was considered a crime. There is a crime that has been committed in America. Come on. They've committed theft of our righteous foundations. But I'm telling you, God is dealing with the spirit of robbery. We're filing our robbery report and we are taking back what righteously belongs to this nation and to the ecclesia within this nation. Amen. Listen to what Thomas Jefferson said about this. He said, when a landmark has been correctly placed and it has been proven right, don't move it. Patriotism is not a short burst of emotion, but the long and steady dedication of a lifetime. One week before the 2016 elections, I had a dream. And this is actually going to lead into where we left off a little bit last night about those scrolls. Okay, but I, I want to start with this dream. I dreamed that I was looking at the damage done to the roof of a house that had endured severe wind. It looked like a giant chunk was taken out of the very structure and the inside of the home was destroyed by the wind and the water. It was a New England style home, very grand. But I was told the damage came from 400 mile per hour winds, obviously a symbol. And the voice of the Lord said to me in the dream, hope is not lost. This can all be repaired. If I want to remind you, a week before the 2016 election, they basically gave Donald Trump no hope of being elected president. And so this is what I wrote as I prayed about it. This was not my house nor the church. I believe it was a house that represented the house of our nation. It was an older New England style house speaking of the foundational government of, our, of America. The damage was done to the roof, the covering, the protection, the shelter portion of the house as has our nation been damaged that way. But the foundation was not damaged. Though roof damage causes everything inside to be damaged by wind and rain, the foundation remained intact. However, left untended, it would eventually cause the entire structure to erode. 400 mile per hour winds, obviously, if it was actually hit by 400 mile per hour winds, nothing could survive. But this house was surviving devastating winds against the odds. That sounds like America. The 400 mile per hour winds represented 400 years of the settlement of this nation. Though the stream showed great destruction, I actually felt hope for our nation. That we would see it continue to withstand the winds and storms. And that God would say, this can be repaired. This was one week before the 2016 election. I believe that we are in the repairing stage right now for our nation. Listen, the Lord said to me several years ago, he said, I'm in the process right now of restoring hope to the church. So that the church can restore hope to the nation. Amen. God's breaking the yoke of hopelessness off of the church. 
We are never hopeless. We are never helpless. And when we've got God on our side, God's going to fight for us. Amen.